Hey, it's lucky, man. It's lucky. We're going to have to uh, make this a part two. But going off, picking up where we left off, uh, the Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So if the Heavenly Father has made a covenant with Israel, promises with Israel, then, you see, to inherit this earth, to establish his righteousness, then the Heavenly Father would be made a liar if he were to make these children of Israel unclean and cast them off forever, man. So something needed to be done to both judge the nation of Israel while keeping the Heavenly Father's uh, uh, word, man. But if we could no longer sacrifice animals, then what was our way in? Now this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, and, uh, our selected. chapter yeah come on I'm pretty sure it's chapter 9 lock in just bear with me for one second Basically, what you have, man, is um, Hebrews 7 and verse 11. It says, Therefore, perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. You see, the Levitical priesthood that was set up uh, uh, for, during this first covenant, the Heavenly Father set up the, the Levites to, uh, uh, you know, basically be the, uh, the high priest. Man. It says, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there for another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? You see, because that covenant of the priesthood went down through the line of Aaron. But what do we have, man? What did, where did our Lord spring forth out of, man? Judah. You see? So the Heavenly Father fulfilled his word by giving us Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Shai's blood to be spilt to atone for our sins. You see, for the sins of the elect of Israel, Lord willing, be a part of that number. But through the elect of Israel, man, the entire nation will even be delivered, man. That's how powerful that uh, 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 sacrifice was. You see, that the whole world is going to be able to be restored in peace through the blood of Yahweh Shai, man. Beginning with the, uh, the elect of Israel repenting and inheriting this earth and establishing the Most High's law that will be written within on that. That is the new covenant. That is what would lead us to the new covenant, you see, which fulfills the Heavenly Father's promises, man, while keeping his word. So going on, it says, uh, verse 12, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity, a change also of the law. You see, because what, what do we do before? We sacrifice an animal. You see, which now Yahweh Shai is the sacrifice, man. All right? Which goes into what? You are saved by grace. We're saved through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, man. Not because of any of our works, but because there was a sacrifice made. Now, this has allowed us 
to have the Holy Spirit come back to us so we can learn accountability and repent, which is exactly why after this time, oh, when this began to happen, what did you have? The time of Cornelius, which was you Israelites who bled in these other nations that we were just reading about being offered repentance, man. When we just clearly read that you were made unclean. You see, Israel began to cast off all of you Israelites that were born of heathen nations that that that, that had a, a you know a heathen mother. Even though the seed goes through the father, you see, they were trying to do their best to separate themselves from the heathen, which is even why the northern kingdom uh, 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 came out here to the Americas, as the apocrypha would tell us. You see. So this is Jake try, trying to do what was right, trying to, to, to separate themselves from the heathen. But you see, once repentance was brought forth to uh, uh, these Israelites who are scattered abroad, it brought a lot of discourse to the nation, man. Just as the story of the prodigal son. You see? Where you had the one son that was, you know, that was a... Uh, 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 remained in the knowledge of the law and what have you. And you had the other son who went out among the world, and when he returned and repented, the son who had been there the whole time was a uh, uh, envious man. You see? That's exactly what was going on at that time. Um, chapter 9 and uh, verse 11 it says, but Hamashiach become the high priest of good things to come, you see, the, the, the kingdom of heaven, you see, eternity the, the theocracy of the most high established on this earth, as I said it says, by a great and more by a great and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. See, because what do we have? We have the physical, physical tabernacle at that time. Now there's a spiritual tabernacle made not with hands, you see, which is what? The elect, the body of Yahweh Shai, man. You Israelites returning. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having ordained eternal redemption for us, you see, to bring forgiveness back to the nation of Israel, who had been scattered throughout all nations, which is why the point was being driven time after time after time, that there is no difference between you Israelites, man. Even though you are coming from all different ways of the world, we're being brought under one banner, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shaiva. All right. Verse uh, 13 it says, For the blood of wolves and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkleth the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Hamashayak, who through 
the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. You see, so Yahawashai walked this earth, bought this flesh, and did not give in to it, man. The only one to not sin. You see? And what is the wages of sin? Death. Why was his blood spilt? To atone for the sins of the elect, which will then usher in peace throughout this whole earth, man. All right? So what it says, um, Purge your, con your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. You see, purge your con conscience from dead works, meaning... Don't be getting entangled with being perfect in the flesh, man. We got to strive for perfection. But you understand that the the salvation came through Yahweh Shai, man. Not by you wearing fringes, you see? So this shows you, man, why, that, that forgiveness has been brought. Now we do our best to be perfect, man. You see? But we are not saved by the law, which is why we don't... We don't act like you got to be running around with fringes all day long, man. Clean up the inside of the cup, and the outside will come afterwards, man. You see? That's what we're doing, cleaning the inside of the cup, man. The Most High knows who is truly sincere in this thing, man. Who has truly given themselves up as a sacrifice to this world for the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. All right? But anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, Jump back to uh, the book of Acts. Book of Acts, chapter 10, and uh, verse 1. It says, There was a certain man in Sisera called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band. All right, so you have this centurion, uh, a Roman soldier, or a soldier for Rome, which you got to remember, Paul was a citizen of Rome. But Paul t tells us himself that he is from the, uh, you know, he's from he's from the, the, the seat of Israel, man. You see, so he's an Israelite, though he's a Roman citizen, just like, we would be Israelites, but American citizens, or whatever nation it is that you're uh, listening from, man. You see, but the bottom line is, we are not, uh, uh, you know, of those nations, man. We are Israelites, you see? So we're repenting and coming back, and that's why this was such a heavy thing, Cornelius being the first uh, 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 Israelite foreigner, you see? The first Israelite who's been, who's taken on all these heathen customs, I mean, he was a centurion, man. You know? So in the eyes of Israel at that time, there was no way that this man would ever, ever be brought back, man. Because they would excommunicate you, man. That's why that's why they were, they were kicking people out of the church. They kicked the blind man out of the church, man. Got under, you know you know how Jake is. His whole family going to the whole little city, whole little town, everybody everybody seeing each other at church. Oh, man, they done kicked Joaquin out. Everybody be talking about you, man. See, this, this, this is how they were doing it, man. But anyway, let me go ahead. I just want to jump down to just to just to hit the main point, man. What happens is people in this world they like to use this vision of the cloven foot beast, um, you know, to try to justify it. Pork, but the whole context of this chapter chapter surrounds Cornelius and uh, you know forgiveness being brought to being brought to uh to him, man. This is uh, verse fourteen. It says. But Peter said, no, no soul, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake to me, uh, spake unto me, him again a second time. What God hath called, or hath cleansed, that called not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So, you know, he saw this vision of the, you know, all kind of different manner of beasts. And was told to, to eat them. So, you know, he's 
questioning himself, you know, trying to understand what, what this vision meant. Because we know the Most High is not a liar, man. You see? He gave us the law so we would know right from wrong. What is sin? The transgression of the law. So what now the Heavenly Father is just up and, you know, just, just changing all these different, you know, do's and don't. Now you can do whatever you want. According to the Christian church, now you can do whatever the hell you want. But don't say bad words. Don't say, you see, they just choose whatever they feel like is something bad, man. The Heavenly Father gave us his law, tells us this in Romans, the seventh chapter. I would not know right from wrong if it wasn't for the law, man. You see? So Paul's wondering, hey, man, or uh, Peter, Peter's wondering, hey, what, you know, what, what, the, what, what did this mean? Called out that common or unclean, and now it's going to be revealed to him as we go on. Um, Verse 19, it says, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, these men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. See, if you go on a little further, it's going to break down what this vision meant. Verse 21, it says, Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he who ye seek. What is thy cause, therefore, that ye come? And he said, and they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of a good report among all the nations of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee unto his house, and to hear words of thee. Now, this would be something that was an unclean act to go even speak or accompany somebody who is not a Jew, man. All right? So, Peter being told he had to go, you know, speak with this guy and go into his house, that was, you know, that was baffling, man. What do you mean I got to go into this guy's house? Man, that's, that's unclean. But, there was a vision, verse 23. Then, uh, called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and the centur uh, and certain brethren from Iopa accompanied him. Verse 28, it says, And he said unto them, You know how it is an unlawful thing, see, not according to the law, the do's and don'ts of the Most High, for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. See that, man? So why is Peter doing this then? He's going and breaking the law? He's going and, you know, doing it anyway? Going on, it says, but God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Where did he say, call no man, call what I have cleansed, not common or unclean? Just on the previous verse, man. That which I've made clean, call not thou common or unclean. This vision of all beasts was likened unto, unto all these Israelites who've been scattered throughout all these nations, looking and acting like all these different beasts of the earth, man. You see? That's why this was such a heavy thing, man. Once Yahweh Shai uh, uh, was crucified, you see, forgiveness was able to be brought to Israel so we could atone and repent, you see? And, and, Really, this, this began to get heavy once Cornelius came in, man. What did this lead to? What did this lead to? Many, many, many Israelites come into the fold, man. I'll just grab this one for an example here. This is um, Acts chapter 2. And um, verse 5, it says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Why Why did they come out of every nation? Why were they even together? 
verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were all with one according in one place. So all these Israelites were gathering together according to the law to take part in this holy day. Why? Because they were repenting, because they were returning, then starting to leave off these different Saturnalia holidays and, you know, whatever other days they had at the time, man. Like unto us, leaving this Christmas, this, you know, the, the, the Hallow's Eve, you know, these different days to come under the holy days, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and rehearse the righteous acts, man. Verse uh, 9, verse 8, it says, And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? So let's see where these Israelites were born that, were out of, that came out of every nation to take part in this day. The Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judah and Cappadocia and Pontus and in Asia and uh, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So the Heavenly Father brought a miracle because all these Israelites were gathered together in his name from all these nations that couldn't speak even each other's language, the Spirit came upon them and they were able to understand one another. Man. This is, is, is a gift of tongues that you be, you know, Christianity consorts with, you know, gibberish. It's actually the act of, of, of you being able to speak in other languages. Man. All right. So anyway, man, I, I believe uh, uh, the point has been made. All right. We've been scattered into all these nations. And Cornelius was a heavy milestone, you see, for, uh, uh, you know, the gospel to really, to really, uh, uh, you know, begin to unfold and be pushed to all of us Israelites, man. You see, who at the time were being scattered everywhere. Which in today's day and age, all of us have been given over to a reprobate mind, to a, to a uh, uh, like it to a, a Gentile state of mind, man. Brought up in black and brown culture and whatever it is that Edomite has polluted our minds with, man. So with that, Lord will this is edifying. All right, we have the time of repentance. We have the time of returning. And to all you who are doing uh, uh, so, man, shalom. Yahweh uh, Shabbat Kadash Call Lord Yahweh Shabbat Shalom. Double honors to the other apostles.